Thank you, Anna, for the introduction, and uh, thank you for the organizers uh, for inviting me to give a talk. I wish I could have joined you in person, but I'm glad I can still do it uh, online. So today I'm going to talk about joint war with Las Serempe. And, and uh, well, in this talk, uh, we are only, F is only going to denote transcendent entire maps. And as usual, Fn is the nth iterate of this map. And we want to understand the dynamics of such a map. And we can look at uh, the FATU set, and as Anna defined it this morning, is the set of stability, where roughly speaking, small perturbations lead to small perturbations of orbits. And we have the Julia set, which is the locus of chaos, the complement in the plane of the FATU set. And as Anna pointed out or highlighted this morning, uh, the escaping set, uh, that is the set of points that escape to infinity under iteration, that we denote by I of F, uh, also plays a very important role in the dynamics of transcendental maps. And well, as in, in the polynomial case, the Julia set is the boundary of this escaping set. And moreover, we'll see that uh, for the functions we're interested in, uh, in fact, it's contained in the, in the Julia set. So what do we know about the escaping set of transcendental maps? Well, already Fatou in 1926 considered iteration of transcendental maps, and he realized that uh, for some maps in the Sang family, uh, there were arcs, there are arcs that connect finite points to infinity um, uh, of scaling points. And we need to wait uh, until the 80s for the Vani in a series of papers with different co-authors to show that these such curves also uh, appear in the exponential family. And here's a picture of the map uh, e to the set minus two. So in blue, we have the FATU set, which is the basin of attraction of a fixed point. And well, this map is two pi periodic, so the picture repeats uh, vertically. And here in yellow, you can see some of these curves I'm talking about. And you need to understand this picture as a collection of curves uh, that go to infinity towards the right. And these curves um, are usually known as the Vani hairs or dynamic rays. Now, in this picture, you can see that we don't not only have a collection of curves, but they seem to have a very specific topological structure. And we have a name for this. So let me define it. So we say that the Julia set of an entire map is a counter bouquet if every connected component of the Julia set is an arc to infinity called hair. So now we are not saying anything about what have the dynamics within this arc, but we still call it hair. And we also have that this uh, Julia set is topologically straight. Um, by this, we mean that there exists a homeomorphism of the whole complex plane such that that straightens this picture. So that makes every of these curves uh, a straight horizontal line. Recording in progress. And well, with this um, definition, uh, well, this characterization, in 1993, Arts and Overstegen showed that the Julia set of the maps in the same family where Fatou found these curves and those exponential maps for which the FATU set is connected and is a basin of attraction. Um, the Julia set is in not only a collection of curves, but has this topological structure. It's a counter bouquet. Now, we want to uh, study further uh, these uh, this, um, objects. Uh, and for that, we are going to uh, fix some definitions. So uh, in order of um, regarding functions with uh, curves escaping to infinity, we are going to adopt the definition of Anna Miriam Benigni and Lazarempe from 2020. And we are going to say that an entire function is screeniferous if for every point in the escaping set, we can find an iterate Fn of set such that the, we can join this iterate to infinity by a curve gamma n with the following properties. So our map restricted to this curve is going to be injective. It's going to be mapped to another curve gamma n plus one that of course joins n of f of n plus one of set to infinity. And the second property is that these curves need to also escape to infinity, right? So the minimum modulus of the points as n goes to infinity also tends to infinity. And a remark is that whenever we have a Kriniferous map, then every point in the escaping set can be connected to infinity by a curve of escaping points. 
Why is this? Well, we know by definition that f and of set for some n uh, can be joined to infinity by one of these curves. And by pulling back, pulling back uh, choosing some uh, inverse branches of this f, we can find a curve of escaping points that joins our point. However, it's not, gonna, it's not necessarily going to be the case that our map uh, is injective when restricted to this curve gamma, because we might have uh, critical points or premiers of critical points and so on. But uh, if you are not worried about the injectivity, if you don't want this to be a dynamic ray in the sense that many of you know, uh, then if you are just looking for curves that join of escaping points that join our point to infinity, this is the case whenever you have a Kriniferous map. And this is related to Aramenko's conjecture. And I think Andrew Brown will uh, tell you more about it later. So we are going to use this definition. And well, uh, of course, uh, the dynamics and the set of singular values of our entire map play a very important role. And already Anna and Chris have defined what the set of singular values is for our map fails to be a covering map, right? And we are going to restrict ourselves from now on uh, to the Yemen-Kolubic class B, which consists, uh, as Chris has told us, um, of all transcendental entire maps with bounded singular set. And let me point out that whenever we have a function in class B, the escaping set has empty interior, and therefore the escaping set is contained in the Julia set. So understanding the escaping set um, and the structure is already telling us uh, about the structure of the Julia set. So which functions do we know to be creamy first? Well, I said that the Vanning authors studied uh, some exponential maps, but in 2003, Schleicher and Sima showed that every map in the exponential family, for all parameters, the functions are Kriniferous. And this is also the case for maps in the cosine family. And more generally, all functions of finite order that are in class B are Kriniferous. And let me remind you that a function uh, is said to have finite order of growth if log of the logarithm of the modulus of f of z is a b of o of log of z. So basically, if our function is growing like e to the z, the power of d, then our function has uh, order d. Um, so note that both exponential and cosine uh, maps belong to this class of function finite order in b. And just for the record, uh, we also know that there's a bigger class of maps uh, that uh, satisfies certain geometric condition that it's not very important for us today. I could give you a definition later if you were very important, if you were very interested. But uh, the point is that this class is bigger and contains all functions of that of finite order or finite composition of functions of finite order in B, for which we know that um, that we know that to be Kriniferous. Now it's important to remark that not all functions in class D are Kriniferous. And in fact, in the same paper where the authors uh, found this big class of maps uh, that are Kriniferous, they also showed that there exists a function in class B such that the Julia set and therefore the escaping set contains no arc. So it's very far from being Kriniferous, right? And we also know that um, um, the Julia set of some of these maps in B um, can contain connected components that when joined to infinity, can be topologically very different from an arc. So we might find uh, an Aster continuum or back and handle, or even the topologist sine core curve. And also, let me just point out that um, uh, also Anna mentioned it this morning that rather than looking at curves only, um, you might also find very combinatorially speaking similar pictures of descriptions of these maps in terms of other objects called dreadlocks. Topologically need not be uh, curves, but this has been developed so far for functions for which uh, the singular set, which let me remind you is the forward orbit of the image of the singular set um, is done. But in, in our talk, we are only going to be interested in functions with arcs in the, in the Julia set. So we said that some functions uh, in the exponential and sine family 
or which the Julia set is connected and the, or um, points in the singular set are attracting to a fi attracting fixed point. Um, we had the kind of bouquet Julia set. So we can define these maps also more generally in class B. So we say that an entire function is of this joint type. If, this, uh, if the map belongs to the class B and every point in the scaling set tends to an attractive fixed point of F under iteration. And this is the same as saying that the FATU set is connected and that uh, the orbit, the singular set that we just defined is compactly contained in the FATU set. Now, why are these joint type maps particularly important? Uh, well, because if we have a function in class B, then it, and we multiply this function by some complex number lambda whose modulus is small enough, then we get a disjoint type map. And this disjoint type map belongs to the parameter space of F. Yeah, and this was defined by Anna also this morning, but let me remind you that these are the maps for which there exist two quasi conformal maps of the plane, such that we have the commutative relation as one. Right. And also, as discussed this morning, when this is the case, the dynamics of uh, our disjoint type map and F are related near infinity by some analog of Bocher's theorem uh, uh, of last day, that is this rigidity theorem um, that relates the dynamics near infinity in subsets of their Julia sets. So understanding the dynamics of these joint type maps are particularly important uh, because they also tell us things about the dynamics of maps in, in class B. Now, um, so with this definition, we have the art that art and over Stevens result uh, generalizes to some of these joint type functions. Namely, in 2020, Baranski, Jarkin, and Rempe showed that if we have a function in class B of finite order and of this joint type, then the Julia set is a counterbook. In particular, the theorem of Ars and over Stegen is included here. And let me remind you that we said a few slides before that these maps were crinifers. Right? And moreover, this theorem also holds for these maps that satisfy. Uh, a uniform hyperstar condition. So we want to, our goal is to understand the relation between having Crinifer's maps and counter bouquet Julia set. So to have a counter bouquet Julia set, let's restrict ourselves to these joint time maps with connected FAT2 set. And then it turns out that whenever we have this joint time map whose Julia set, which uh, with a counter bouquet Julia said, then the map needs to be Crinifer. So we have this collection of curves, and by having this structure, it follows for known results that the, the pairs need to escape to infinity uniformly as we want to have a Crinifer's map. So the question we uh, posed ourselves and wanted to answer was the following Is it true that if we have a Crinifer, this joint type map, then the Julia set has to be a counter bouquet? And the evidence we had is that this was the case, because the theorem I just stated in the previous slide said that, uh, well, if it was a finite order minus joint type map or a finite composition of function of finite order in B, then this was the case. Um, however, uh, we've been able to show that this is not always the case, that there exists a, a coniferous function of this joint type in class B, such that the Julia set is not a counter bouquet. And um, in order to tell you uh, a little bit what's the idea of the proof, I need to give you a definition of counter bouquet for a subset of the plane. So I gave you a definition for the Julia set to be a counter bouquet. And I'm going to use this theorem of uh, Nadal, Habib, and Lasse, which says that a uh, um, subset of the plane is a counter bouquet if we have the following. If the set is closed, if every connected component of the set is an arc connecting a finite endpoint infinity, if for any sequence converging to a point Y, uh, the ray, the hairs attached from this point onwards converge uh, in the Hausdorff matrix, so they converge nicely. Then we also want the endpoints of X to be the MZ X. This was mentioned by Anna before this morning. And also, um, all accessible points from the complement of the set need to be endpoints. 
uh, of our set. And this is the same as saying that every hair is accumulated on by other hairs from both sides. Now, it turns out that when we have a disjoint function that is coniferous, then the Julia set is closed, it's always the case. We already knew by results of last that every connected component of the Julia set is an R connecting a finite endpoint to infinity. We also knew that endpoints of the Julia set are dense in the Julia set, and that every hair had to be accumulated on by other hairs from both sides. So the question we were really asking ourselves was, is it true that uh, this third condition Hold. Is it true that we need all rays to converge nicely in the Hubbard metric, or might it be the case that we may have some uh, pairs of points that don't converge in the way a uh, sequence of rays, where our point, where, where some rays might be folded, might be hooked, and do not converge in the house of metric? So this is what we did. We constructed an example where this kind of uh, phenomenon happens. And I'm very lucky that uh, Chris Bishop just gave you a talk about models, um, because I can tell you the way we do the, did it is we um, design some tracks for this to happen and then construct and then get using uh, Bishop's result um, get a disjoint type map, uh, which has a counter bouquet um, the way we are prescribing it by, by designing the tracks. And just a couple of words about the tracks we, we designed. Well, we designed a track uh, that has some fixed uh, curve dynamic right here. And what we did was to define, this is just a sketch, they're not exactly like this, but a collection of other tracks um, that, have, uh, that have premise of this one that need to be hooked and need to be around here. And then when we take and then we needed to make sure that the connected components of the Julia set that we get by drawing these tracts are still uh, curves, so that we have a Kriniferous map. But now when we look at the pre-images of these uh, curves, we are going to get a collection of rays that accumulate in the bad way, let's say. So we call this a bad pair, in fact, whenever we find this. So this is the idea of how we, um, we constructed our example. Now I want to give you a couple of um, further results. Uh, so we just, uh, I just said that it's possible to find functions with uh, our collection of rays, the Julia said, but are not a counter bouquet. And I, I want to give you some condition in order to have a counter bouquet Julia said, and for that, let me define what I mean by absorbing set. So we say that a subset of the Julia set is absorbing if it is forward invariant, and if every escaping point eventually enters A. So if there's some iterate of the escaping point in A, or in other words, the escaping set is contained in the backward orbit of my set. And we also have this technical condition. If I have an arc in A that goes to infinity, then it, its image is also an arc to infinity. And with this definition, uh, we showed the following, that if we have a function in class B that is of this joint type, then the following are equivalent. The function has a counter bouquet Julia set, X is an R, and a counter bouquet contained in the Julia set, such that this, uh, this counter bouquet contains one of these sets, JR of F, which is uh, the set of points for which all iterates uh, are, have modulus bigger than R, or uh, is it equivalent to saying that there is an absorbing counter bouquet in the Julia set? So this is not too difficult, and this is trivial, B implies C. So here the challenge was to prove that, uh, to prove that C implies A. So what we are saying is the moment our Julia set contains a counter bouquet to which all escaping points are eventually mapped, then the whole Julia set needs to be a counter bouquet. So this bad behavior that we saw in the previous example, this cannot happen the moment we have a counter bouquet anywhere else in the Julia set. And just to conclude, I want to give you an application of this theorem. So in my thesis, I introduced the following class of maps. So we say that a map in class B belongs to the class B if the Julia set of a map of lambda f with lambda small enough is a counter bouquet. So what we are saying here is that if the disjoint type map 
in the parameter space, if any, and therefore all by this rigidity uh, result of Lasse, uh, has a countable head, then our map is in this class. And it uh, follows from known results that all functions of finite order in B or all finite compositions of functions of finite order in B belong to this class, and even some with uniform linear head start condition. So I showed in my, in my thesis that um, all functions in this class are crinifers. Um, and but the, the issue with this definition is that, uh, well, it's the condition is given on a map on the parameter space of our function f rather than in terms of a property of the function f itself. Um, so it's not ideal. So um, as a consequence of uh, the result in the previous slide, um, we have now a new characterization, which is the following. A uh, map in class B belongs to class CB, if and only if the Julia set of this map contains an absorbing candle bouquet. Um, the way it goes is like we, we use this rigidity result of last set that relates the dynamics of F and lambda F uh, near infinity. And uh, we manage to, using this result, we manage to say, well, if the Julia set contains an absorbing counter bouquet, then the Julia set of the map lambda f is also going to contain an absorbing counter bouquet. And this map is of this joint type. So in the previous theorem, we said that uh, having an absorbing counter bouquet was enough for our map lambda f to have a counter bouquet Julia set. And therefore, we've shown that our map f uh, belongs to to the class CB. And um, you said between 20 and 25, so I think I'm on time. Uh, so these are the results I wanted to state today. Um, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Leticia. Are there any questions? I have a question, a tiny question. So in your very last slide, I was, uh, so I was trying to understand what this class CB was. I understand the definition, but uh, so is this the class of entire transcendental function which have counter bouquets Julia set or, or not? No, 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 not the function F itself. Okay. Only the maps which are in the, in the, which are of this joint type. Yes, of right? course, so of this, course. Yeah. So if the map of this joint type in the parameter space is a counter bouquet, doesn't need to, here we could have taken another map, not necessarily lambda f, then our, then all maps in this uh, parameter space are in this class CB. Okay, and they are hence all crinifers, right? Or yeah. No? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. maybe, maybe I may, may make a remark here. So the class CB that uh, Leticia introduced there, I think it's a very natural class, right? So, Somehow having a so, so when we talk about having counter bouquet Julia set that really only makes sense for the disjoint type case where the Julia set is, is separated nicely into these components. Um, but really, you want to have a class like you know, like the exponential family or the class S or the class B or various of these conditions where you're allowed to you know have Julia sets that are not necessarily um, you know have our two sets that are not necessarily connected. Um, so, uh, because having a connected Fatou set in itself, you know, it's, a, it's an important class, but uh, one of the reasons it's important is because it tells us things about more general. So, I think this was a very, very natural class uh, that was introduced there. But uh, as Atithia said, this was kind of, you know, it was kind of defined in the slightly roundabout way where you say you take your function and you take another function in the, in the uh, parameter space. And then you look at what does that look like? And that will tell you, give you something about the function itself. Um, but uh, so, so with this result, yeah, I think I, actually the description of theorem B in a way, that's the easier way. Well, I don't know whether it's the easier way to describe it because you have to know what is an absorbing counter bouquet. But it's maybe in a more natural way, right? It, it, it seems more natural. It says we have this function, it doesn't matter what it looks like, but near infinity, if you have any escaping point, eventually it enters into this counter bouquet that sits near infinity. Um, and so we can say that, that that's the same class as this kind of natural class that, that uh, um, introduced before. And it really, you know, 
it really turned out to, to be important uh, in a thesis to have this Cantor bouquet uh, structure. So uh, um, I think it's a class that people, you know, if, if they want to have hairs, then it, it depends on what you're doing, but uh, it might well be that actually what you really want is, is to be in this class CV where you have this whole nice structure for the Julia set itself. So there are more questions online. Just one more quick question, and then we start with uh, David Martipeta, but please go ahead. Uh, you need Sorry, I thought it was online. I yeah, I have a, a small question. And is there a way to check whether there is an uh, absorbing counter bouquet in your Julia set? So how would you actually check it? Um, I don't think uh, there's an easy way of checking it, right? Um, maybe we can ask, are there other conditions? Um, where we know that if uh, the tracks have certain shape, then it, this is going to be a finite order and so on, and we already know it has a counter bouquet. But uh, showing that it has an absorbing counter bouquet, uh, I can't think of an easy way. I know, mm -hmm. Lasse. Well, well, well the, the various conditions that ensure it, mm -hmm. right, which Lithia mentioned. So if you have this finite order condition uh, being the class B, that'll be enough to have it. Um, or if you have a, um, you know, if you have these head start conditions. So really, in a way, this is this class is the natural kind of generalization of this, of these conditions where you know finite order in itself is not maybe a very dynamically natural condition, and you know the the head start conditions and so on. They're also not that easy conditions. I mean, they're easier to check. Um, so, so usually, I mean, you know, often you can tell by looking at the tracks of the function whether you're going to expect to have this kind of okay or not. But, uh, um, Thanks. Well, yeah. So let's thank the speaker again, and we start.